All right, friends, it's time to give you loyal listeners a discount on protein powder. You may or may not know, but I launched my very first protein powder two years ago. It's a grass-fed beef isolate with only three ingredients, grass-fed beef, either organic cacao or organic vanilla, and organic monk fruit. Now, if you don't want any of the added flavor and sweeteners, you can also just get unflavored. And no matter what flavor you choose, you're getting over 23 grams of protein per scoop, which is gonna keep you full and satisfied between meals. I love starting my day with a Fab Four smoothie and breaking my fast with that much protein. It makes a serious difference in my cravings and blood sugar balance the rest of the day, and I've seen it with my clients as well. Now, I never thought I'd own a product company, but when I got pregnant with Sebastian, I realized the majority of protein powders were chemically extracted or enzymatically extracted, and I wanted to use heat and water only. I wanted minimal ingredients because we don't need those emulsifiers, fillers, or added vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. All of those additions increase the chances that it's not gonna work for your body, whether it be bloating, digestion issues. I just wanted pure clean protein to keep you full and satisfied so you could build the most delicious Fab Four smoothie. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of the flavor. If you take a look at our reviews on Amazon, you'll see five-star reviews for flavor. And that is key because if you don't love your Fab Four smoothie and you don't love drinking your protein powder, you're not gonna do it. It won't become a habit and it's consistency that outpaces everything. So. If you're here and you're listening and you want to give our protein powder a try, use the code PODCAST5 for $5 off your order. And let me know if you love it. My favorite ways to apply this protein powder is in my Fab Four smoothie, making freezer fudge, making chocolate milk, making hot chocolate, and throwing the unflavored into all my kids' baked goods. So let me know how you use it. Let me know if you love it. And share this podcast deal with your friends. Jen Robin is the founder and CEO of Life in General, a full service organizational design company and LIJ Spaces, a custom cabinetry line designed from the unique viewpoint and perspective of a professional home organizer. Jen has always loved organizing and creating systems and she started out as a celebrity executive assistant where she mastered the art of to-do list, time management and efficient systems. Over the years, Jen has successfully evolved Life in General into a holistic home transformation company and her new book, Life in General, A Joyful Guide to Organizing Your Home and Creating the Space for What Matters Most is out now. I am bringing Jen on the show to inspire me to keep my new home free of clutter and to hold on to the most important things in life, my people. Jen, thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to have you a little bit selfishly because what you do for people is organize their life in a holistic way. And I need that help. I just bought a house. We haven't moved in yet. And I'm already thinking like, how do I set up my life to be strategic with my habits, with my organization? And you have a systematic approach to doing that. So I'm so excited to pick your brain. Yay. yay. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm curious though. It's such an interesting career. Uh, how mm-hmm. did you become passionate about this and how did you start your business? So I was a personal assistant before life in general to a professional athlete and he loved to move just in Los Angeles in the same city, Manhattan beach. And he just wanted a change of scenery. And I just remember being so excited, geeking out over, you know, sending him on vacation or when he was on away games and just, you know, coordinating the move, color coding everything, getting all the systems in place. And my friends thought I was crazy because obviously like moving is not everyone's favorite thing. And I just loved it. And I remember even bigger than that, seeing how the systems that I created in each and every one of his homes affected how he was living. Like it just, he, all he needed to do was focus on the things, you know, obviously his sport, but being able to have time with his friends and family because of everything else was taken care of. And seeing that structure where, you know, the drawer organization, everything in your home has a home. I mean, I I saw it every day. And then I was organizing for friends and families on the weekends. I was so booked and it was so fun. I wasn't charging. Um, and I obviously had a full-time job, but I didn't care. I was just so enthralled with it. And I just knew that 
from the feedback I was getting, like, you should do this. And I had no idea that it was a thing. I didn't know professional organizing existed. I ran to the bookstore. I looked up all these books and sure enough, um, it was a thing and life in general was born. And I took that leap of faith knowing like I had no idea on running my own business, but it was really something I was incredibly passionate about and seeing not just transformations, but how it made people feel. So I knew it was something and just took that leap and here we are. <laughs> well, your passion sh shines through and I feel like the people who are most passionate about something come up with systems or approaches that make it repeatable, that make people like the lay person who maybe isn't organized, they feel empowered because they can follow through with something and they can follow your approach to feel like they have a handle on their home. Totally, totally. So I'd love to actually go through that. I know your new book, Life in General, A Joyful Guide to Organizing Your Home and Creating the Space for What Matters Most, just came out. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, and in that book, you talk about uh, the pillars of life in general. So what's what are the pillars? So we have a five-step method, and this method is, is really the foundation of what we do in what we call our process. It obviously varies from space to space, um, but it, these five steps, we've really kind of narrowed down to the key things that people can do in their own home. So the first step is removing everything from that space. So if you're organizing a pantry, you're going to take everything out, that clean slate, start fresh. But while you're taking things out, you're going to be categori categorizing and sorting those like items. So that's the step two is the categorizing. So you're going to put breakfast with breakfast, you know, dinners with dinners, pastas with pastas, baking with baking, and really getting clear. And then the third step is discarding and donating. And I love this step because, you know, one step further than that is understanding like what you do really use, what you need, what you love. And I do believe that everything has a, everything can have a home, but it might not be your home. And so that's where it's fun for me to say, we partner with, you know, seven, eight different charities all in Los Angeles where you know, we can take those items that someone's not using or needing and bring it to, to their, you know, their donation center. And then the fourth step is where you add the organizational systems. And this one is funny because in the book, I talk about you have to have product and all of this. And I knew that it was going to stir up some controversy of, you know, don't want to spend money and all that. And it's, it's not that you have to buy product. You can definitely get creative and use what you have or Tupperware for drawer dividers, but you do need containment. You need to keep those items, those like items together um, because it, it really does need to be maintained. And then the fifth is the maintenance, of course. And this is something that once everything does have a home in your home, it's you just putting it back. And some things, you know, if there's two stories in your home and you have a baby, you might want to have, you know, a baby zone upstairs and downstairs. So there's, there's different variations here, but the maintenance is huge because that's where, you know, all of your steps will, it matters in the end if you're actually putting the items back, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that one's a fun one where I'm like, I can't live with you and physically put this back, but now that you know where it goes and it's labeled and contained and it has a system, you know, it's really you taking that extra step and making sure it goes back when you pull it out. No, oh, this is already, <laughs> you're already organizing my brain for our move. Oh, luckily the removing process isn't part of it. We're just going to be <laughs> placing things in. But I'm curious about the sorting and organizing. I think about my pantry right now. I have all my baking stuff together. I have all my spices together, kind of like the snacky foods. But when it comes to things that maybe aren't the same, but are the same size, like how do you, is it by size? Is it by shape? Is it by? So, yeah, we love this because there's very like generic you know, where we do zones. So it'd be like the baking zone. So you can get really clear and then have that category where it's like hot cereals, cold cereals, you know, um, whether it's for the baby or an adult's 
bars, all of that, but it just should all be in the same area. So it's less about, you know, fitting all perfectly in a bin or next to each other, but it's, it's containing them. Meaning like if you do put them on a shelf, having these different size things, if it fits and it makes sense um, for your space, but keeping the like items together is the most important because you know, okay, if I'm getting ready in the, in the day and I'm going to get breakfast, it's, it's in this zone. So it, it does vary from space to space, depending on inventory and the space you're working with. But that, that part of it is really important. I mean, when I think about sorting and I think about, you know, it's, um, visually, uh, professional organizers are fun to watch on television, I'll just say. <laughs> um, but, you know, Chris and I were watching an episode of uh, the home edit, and I think they were in Khloe Kardashian's garage, and she had all this overage and clear containers where she put her water wipes for her daughter. And, um, and I, Chris and I had this conversation like, okay, great. Like, we have a box of water wipes in our garage right now on the floor by the washer and dryer. <laughs> That's where it is. That's where it lives. Um, and I would love to have this type of organization in our new home. Um, but at what point do you restock? Because I'm telling Chris, okay, well, when the water wipe subscription from Amazon shows up and there are more water wipes than would fit in the clear pretty box that's in her garage on the shelf, and then I still have the box on the floor full of water wipes, <laughs> like, how are you ensuring whether it be bringing new items into your home, deciding this is where my supplements go, but now all of a sudden I'm adding a supplement or yeah. this is what I have on subscription and all of a sudden it, there's more than where I have space for. Like what, how yeah. are you accounting for that and being prepared for that? We, so we love to marry function and aesthetic. So it's, but at the end of the day, the function has to win. You know, it could look beautiful, which is great, but you have to be able to maintain the system. And if there's that system that breaks down, it's not going to be maintained. Right. And then we love what we call backstock. So if you have a space, you know, in your pantry, let's say, or your, your garage, where you have your routine, what works for you and your family, you, you know where everything is. And then but you don't need a hundred of them right there, but you do use them. You can do kind of like what we call prime real estate. So having the flow of your space in your home, but then there could be a closet a little bit further away or another end of the garage or a backstock closet where that's kind of where you go first before you buy, if, if that makes sense. And it's yeah. this, this flow of what works for you and your family and your home. And I, I always stress this because there, you know, organizing is not a one size fits all. I always say that you could have the same amount of family members, the same household, but the way you're going to set up your home is going to be different from the next person because of so many different variables. And at the end of the day, you have to do what works best for you and what feels good, but also what's functioning. So this backstock is what we like to call, you know, wherever you can create that in your home. So maybe you're not reordering it, but you're going there first. And then once you see that's getting low, whether it's a weekly check or a monthly check, depending on the items, um, that system will then be created. It's great. It's almost like your garage has a receiving and a restocking cabinet. And then yeah. that's when you perform your maintenance or go, yeah. going around refilling. Uh, when it comes to taking inventory of your home after things are sorted, categorized and organized um, to maintain your maintenance, <laughs> how, like how often are you doing that? I think if I allow, like, it's something that I'll see Chris do. He's really organized in our home and he wishes that I would be a little more organized, which is why I'm so glad you're on the show, um, is, you know, we have a diaper caddy in our upstairs in our bedroom where we do our diapering with our kids and really primarily Tasha now. And then we have our down downstairs zone where we have like a drawer that has like a little leather mat that you roll out and wipes and diapers in that drawer. Um, and he will restock these things like daily. Um, <laughs> is there, to me, it feels a little bit like he calls them his Kenny bears um, because there's this uh, Richard Scary books where Kenny the bear does like he brushes his teeth, he washes his face, he like he does all the things you have to do every day. So <laughs> yeah. Chris is like coined this the Kenny bears. Yeah. And so Bash, oh, I love asks, that. <laughs> what are you doing? And he's like, I'm doing my Kenny bears, and it'll be like putting take 
you know, helping with the house stuff. Like Chris is, Chris has got this thing running like a well-oiled machine, but whether it's like laundry or refilling the diaper caddy or, you know, the things that just organizing of things so that it makes sense. But for me, I'm like, this sort of seems, I mean, there's an important thing to do every day, but it sort of seems inefficient to have to like go so far as to all the time to like restock things. So I'm curious, like when it comes to restocking, um, what is like the most efficient way to do it? Yeah. First of all, Chris is my spirit animal. Um, (laughs) I love this kitty bear. I'm like, I've never heard of that. And I love it. (laughs) Um, It it really goes back to what I was saying earlier of every single family and every person is going to be different. So what works for you might not work for the next person. So for me, for example, I love like a 20 minute sweep at the end of the day. And that really kind of sets my next day. But then I, I schedule on Sundays a few hours to just do kind of a whole house restock, edit, if there's anything. And that is really important to me because I know that I need that in my life. And I know that that's going to set me up for success through the week. But then it might not be realistic for somebody else. Or, you know, if they're a single parent or they're working 24 seven or in that season of their life. So it goes back to what is going to work for that person and what's, you know, knowing that give grace, if it doesn't happen, there's no such thing as perfect. Um, But what really does make sense. And for Chris, that is something that it's, he loves to do and it's how he resets. And I love that, but that might not be realistic where some people can only do it once a month. Um, But it really is so important. I, I really believe, I mean, I wrote a book about it. I started a company about it. I live and breathe this. If you came to my house right now, I really do practice what I preach. It is, you know, a part of my life. And I've made this a part of my lifestyle because it's so important to me. But also I've, I've really prioritized what this means because I know if my house is messy or, you know, my car is filled with clutter, I don't operate at my best. And I know that at the end of the day, it's like that 20 minute reset, you know, the weekly reset, whatever that looks like is going to help me long term. And it's going to affect a lot of different areas of my life, but it might not be realistic for the next person. So you just have to do what works for you during that season of your life, because that also will change, you know, if you have kids or if you're traveling more, it's just really getting down to making it a priority when you can and scheduling it in the calendar, but also what makes the most sense for you. Definitely. Well, I think Chris is your spirit animal. He, <laughs> he is affected by his physical surroundings in a way that it inhibits his creativity. It, it, it hurts his self-esteem. Like it's connected to a lot of the way he, he feels in the way that some people a blow out in a nice brand new outfit and power heels makes them feel awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, if Chris's surroundings are clean and everything is stocked, he's like, I feel like I have my life together. Yep. So, so can we talk about how you organize restock and your two hour weekend routine that helps you get your life in order? Like what are you doing in those 20 minutes a day? And what are you doing the two hours on the weekend? So the 20 minutes a day is pretty much just seeing any of the clutter that's left on hard surfaces, countertops of things that might not have been put away. Um, I'm a bonus mom to two kids. And so when we have them, making sure the homework's near their backpack and walking them through that. And they know now (laughs) they they've learned, but it's, it's funny because it really does set us all up for success. And I'm seeing it, you know, I have dogs too, and my, my fiance making the bed every day, but at the end of the day, just kind of doing a once over glare of things that I know that I could just 20 minutes to put away and fine tune and tidy. And again, nothing's perfect. But on the weekends, I do this Sunday reset. It's my favorite part of the week. And it really is my time. This is my like self-care, self-love. I've learned that this actually does matter for me. And so I block off you know, that time, whether it be in the morning or the evening, for me, it doesn't matter the time. I just really like to schedule about two hours. And that's checking the groceries and making sure there are things in the shampoo bottle is full and just going through each room and taking inventory. And if it's something that I need to put things away, I take that time. And I do actually try to do it more in the mornings in case I need to do groceries and whatnot. But I have learned that this is what has set me up every time for success. And when I'm out of town, I can feel 
that difference. And so that Monday morning, or I might have to go to the office a little later because I know it's going to throw me off mentally and it's, it's become my thing, but it really is, um, it's a part of the routine that, like I said, it just sets me up for success and yeah, I put music on and do the laundry and it just feels good. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, it, it, the little like elbow grease in your life mm -hmm. to like set yourself up for the week. I mean, I'm probably making myself sound like a slob. I promise I'm not a slob, but just in comparison to Chris's high standards, I'm an, I think I'm, I fall in the, in the mid range of, <laughs> of organization. Um, so I'm, I am also curious if you do any form of like auto shipping of the things that you, um, that you purchase to reshop, uh, stock, or if, um, you like, make all your purchases from one place to like streamline and simplify or if for beauty purposes you like the branding to be the same like is there um like what level of of matching organization and and beauty because everything you put out online i'm like can my place look like <laughs> <laughs> um i it's a little bit of both right the automation is things that are pretty easy like i love I love making my life more simple. So if that's using Instacart instead of going to the grocery store while I can do the laundry or do my two hour tidy, I mean, I'm gonna do that. It's it's taking the inventory and there's some things that I don't have to restock as much or if we're gone for the week, there might be a diff that might look different. So I've suggested to a couple clients, make a checklist and almost have that same checklist and go through your house each week. And you can have it on the notes on your phone of things that you need to restock or replenish or that you just check up on. And so it, it's a little combo. Like I love online. I love Amazon. I can be there next day. It's also very scary that that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's just trying to create a more simple life so you can do the things that you want to do. So for me, it's I, I love that two hours, but it's important for me to do that because I gain 20 hours during the week of sanity and spending time with the people I care about and creating that routine and structure. So it's it's definitely a combo and it varies week to week or month to month. And like I said, when we have the kids, that's a different, you know, that week looks different, that day looks different. But it's just building your own foundation, knowing that it can alter and knowing that it can change, but but feeling how you really feel. And I think it's so important on checking in with yourself and, you know, are you happy? Does this feel good? Does this feel right? How's my home life? Am I good with my surroundings? Because things constantly change. You know, I hope that things are changing and evolving, but it's kind of like guiding yourself through that. Absolutely. Well, speaking of which, um, you just mentioned living a simple life and um, what your surroundings make you feel, if it's making you feel joy, kind of gives me the Marie Kondo vibes. Um, mm -hmm. But can we talk about discarding and donating and like really honing in on, on what is most important to you and how you help your clients do that? Mm -hmm. So I, I say, and I'll mention it every day I can, because people are like, well, what do I do here? What do I do here? And it's, every single person is different and that's a beautiful thing and so there's people have different obstacles or barriers with how they feel about stuff in their home and what clutter means to them and what their surroundings mean to them and i my biggest advice with understanding each person is getting clear to why what is the intention for your home what do you want for yourself what's important to you doesn't matter if it's not important to the next person it's what is really really important to you and when you get clear on that and you're going through your things and and asking yourself if this is something that you love use or need and then if it's not that is something that could be better suited somewhere else. So, you know, we work with a lot of women's shelters and if it's, you know, makeup products that are coming in that's not being used, that's still intact, you know, we'll take that to their place or we'll give them the resource to say, hey, there's some really incredible foundations that could use this. Um, or if it's with kids' toys and we teach them the one in, one out rule and having these real conversations with, 
with people of saying, you know, what kind of life do you want to live? What do you want to do in your home to have that set up? And, and also the donation part is huge because it, it might not add value to your life, but it could add value and be a necessity to somebody else's. So I think it's a beautiful thing when, when you do discard and donate and edit often and, it, it really changes the way you feel about things coming into your space and how you buy and how you shop and, and getting really clear with your intention. I think it's, it's a game changer once you kind of feel the difference, but also knowing that you can cause happiness for someone else. I think that's, that's a really exciting and fun and beautiful thing, but it's getting back to what do you want and how do you want to feel? I mean, I definitely feel better being a minimalist. I think it would be shocking to people to hear that I have two pairs of heels. I have a, <laughs> a like, no joke. You'll yeah. see it on whether I'm on TV or like at an event. I have like a black pair of pointy heels and I have a creamy, like blushy, creamy suede pair of heels. And then, you know, I have like a strappy sandal. That is like two pairs of like real heels and a strappy sandal. And people would be like, what? But it's just like, I, I don't like bringing things into my home that I'm not going to constantly be using. And I, it does feel so good, especially with the number of things, decisions that I make a day, clients that I see, podcasts that I do, business, you know, emails, conversations about product, whatever it is, I'm like, less feels like so much more to me. And so, you know, I am luckily I'm not a slob, but luckily for Chris, I do like few things and I don't feel very connected to, um, like material things. And it's, it's interesting, um, because I haven't been someone to, uh, and I think it's from my mom. My mom was constantly like, I'd be wearing something in junior high and she'd be like, you don't wear this. We're donating it. And I, I may have worn it. The love week, your mom. <laughs> I may have worn it the week prior, but she like was constantly donating and, um, and didn't show any form of attachment to things that we had, even if they were like, weirdly, even if they were like family heirlooms or like not heirlooms, but like, you know, my mm -hmm. grandma's bowl from whatever until just recently, actually, my, my grandma did pass away and she's holding on to some of her things and not all of them, but more attachment now that she's gone, but how are our emotions and attachments? Like, how did that, how does that lead to clutter in our homes and, and what can we do about it? Yeah. So I'm sorry about your grandma. I think I, I, I love that there's this conversation around attachment and things. And I, I love that, you know, I grew up in a house where I, I mean, I coined the term connection over collection because not when we would come home and my dad, both my parents are wonderful. And my dad passed in 2009 and it was something Sorry. that he instilled in me every single day. Like things do not matter. People matter and how you make people feel. And I, I believe that to my core and again, created a company around this idea of can't take it with you, with, with you when you go, but also it's, going back to the why of it all and why is it so important and this attachment that I, I find um you know it's fascinating I didn't I'm not a psychologist and I wish I had nine lives because I would definitely go back to school for that because it's it's fascinating watching different clients and different people go through these process because again everyone has the barrier or a different reason you know they don't want to lose the memories or they'd feel guilty or all of these things and and I love I love when life in general comes into a home because there's never any judgment it's a it's really just hearing and listening and understanding the story so then we can help guide that person and what's going to be best for them so if it's someone who is you know maybe lost a loved one or going through divorce or you know the opposite side too of their you know they're getting married and having a baby and these what the things represent into their home and i always ask you know there's what really matters to you in these moments and what's the most important thing and it's never the thing it's always the person and how can we get the best solution for you and so you know I worked with my mom and after my dad had passed for me 
you know, we had clo his clothes and his stuff. And the solution for me was, you know, I'm not asking people to get rid of everything. I just want people to get really clear with, you know, how much of it or what other solutions. And so I took all of his clothes and surprised my family with blankets and quilts that they use all the time. And it's all of his stuff and then donated the rest to some really great shelters um, in Sacramento. And I remember having this conversation with my mom because years later, 10, 10 years later, we, we helped my mom do more and, because she wasn't ready. Right. And so giving the grace you know, I was, I needed to do it right away within the year and my mom needed to do it 10 years later. And it goes back to that, what each person needs and having that conversation and being supportive. And, you know, there's, there's all these solutions, but really getting deep with, it's the cheesy in me, but it's also the real soul work. It's, it's the, you know, what do you want? And how can we create that for you? And um, again, I have a box of my dad's stuff, just one, and I have a quilt. And that for me was, you know, quote unquote enough. And we don't really need much as humans. You know, we just need to be seen and loved and heard and, you know, be with the people we love. And so when it comes to having these attachments or emotional barriers and creating that life for yourself, it's getting clear on what can you, what do you want to keep rather than what do you want to discard and flipping the script in that conversation. And it really is such a beautiful moment with yourself and when we work with our clients, but having those honest, really, really honest conversations. I think you've given our listeners a beautiful way to remember someone that they've lost. Um, I wish I had you on the podcast before my grandmother passed away because I would have done that for my mom. I would have snuck up to her house and pulled some things that I could have made into a quilt for her. But that is just a, a beautiful way to do it. And to remember what you want to keep, I think is really special too. Um, just because it is, we just don't, I think we don't want to forget the memories. So like mm -hmm. that shirt reminds you of that time and that hat reminds you of that ball game and that, you know, so I can understand that it took your mom a while. And I'm so sorry that you lost your dad. Mm -hmm. Sounds like he was, he, um, prioritized One of the most, kind. Important, <laughs> most important yeah. things in life, yeah. people, not things. Yeah. He knew it before, you know, and he, it's a special, there's solutions and going back to, one more thing of, you know, there's a beauty in taking photos and making books and something that takes up even on your phone and having, or even a hard drive of just going back to it if and when you need to, but rather the physical amount of stuff that could take up a space. And then, you know, you have your, you can create something new there or keep it keep it empty. I'm always like, you can have empty drawers. It's okay. You know, but there, there are different solutions and prob that you can problem solve anything. You just have to get clear and also understand what at the end of the day do you want. And it's, there's, there's so much beauty in honoring someone and there's just different ways to go around, go about it. Definitely. What do you think some of the common barriers are that keep us from getting organizing, getting organized and streamlining our space. We hear, so in the book, I talk about six, but we hear probably the top three would be, I don't have enough time. And another one would be, I don't know where to start or I might need it one day. And those are probably the top three going with the fourth would be, I don't want to lose memories. I feel guilty or the one in the book that I, I love that was the hardest one to do was I'd feel lost without my stuff because, you know, not many people feel that that's what they feel until we go real deep <laughs> and different situations. But the, I don't have enough time is one of the biggest and i always i always say well what do you want to have time for and flipping that script of having that conversation and once you find out it's like okay well that might mean we have to do something different with the schedule or again scheduling it in and making it a priority um because that's the first to visit like to usually go like oh we'll organize on saturday and then something else comes up and you push it back and you push it back but I, I say in the in the book, you sharpie that shit in and you make sure it sticks because 
that is self-care and that will affect other areas and pushing that off, you know, making time. It doesn't need to be a full day or a full month. It's being realistic with your time, but understanding that it is really, really important. So having those those conversations, but I, I, some people are a combo of the different, some people are like, I'm all, I'm all six, <laughs> you know, so we've been getting a lot of feedback of the, the top three, but really it's fun when people are like, I'm, how do I do this? I'm every single one of them. I'm like, okay, pick up the book. We're going to go through it. We're going to go through it together. We're doing this book club right now, walking through, you know, everyone through this entire book of why it matters, the soul work, the process, the trouble spots, and and really how to maintain for the rest of your life. Oh, it's so important. I, and the time piece, I mean, that comes up in my work all the time with clients. Like I don't have time to cook meals at, at home, or I don't have time to move my body or go outside and get light or um, you know, I don't have time to put my phone down at night before I go to bed. And it's, it's, there's an attachment there. Like yeah. there's something underneath that, that's keeping you from making time or reorganizing your life to create time or f find, I don't want to say find space, make space for this, but I will, it's, it, it's funny because I'd rather figure out and, you know, use life in general as my guide to sharpie that stuff in, sharpie that shit in, <laughs> or whether that be um, restocking shampoo, conditioners, and making sure my gr groceries are stocked instead of spending time on my phone trying to order groceries while my kids are around and then feeling guilty as a mom that I'm doing it at this time when it's not like scheduled. And um, I was really hesitant, not hesitant. I'm just a spontaneous uh, more of a flow state of a person mm -hmm. until, um, running a business until having children. And then you want to be able to be in a flow state. You want to have flexibility and freedom and you don't have it unless you're organized and scheduled. Oh, and it, so like, that's the stuff that goes away when you don't do all of these other things and make, make the time and create the time and space for it. Yeah. Um, and to that, it's, it's a lifestyle and it's a lifetime. It's, you know, you do this once you do it right. And then it's the maintaining, but it, it does allow space. It gives you back time. It gives you back the other stuff that you want when you do take the time to do it first. And, but it's cho a choice, you know, I've, it's so I actually last week I had a client say, I don't have enough time. And I'm like, walk me through your day. And at the end of the day, it was four hours of TV. I'm like, okay, so we're going to have some conversations. We're going to, you know, because they wanted to change. I'm like, I'm going to be, I'm going to help you and keep you accountable for this. And these little changes, you know, again, I'm not asking to get rid of the four hours of TV, but if we could start slowly, you know, implementing some of the organ organizing that will really help you. And she, you know, it's just, it's funny because like you said, it's just, what you're choosing and what you're prioritizing. And it's not going to be this perfect science every single day or week, but creating that space will give you back all the other stuff, right? And the time and the stuff that you do want to make space for. So Absolutely. <laughs> and it's interesting because I wonder, you know, four and a half, four hours of television is definitely enough for anyone. Um, and it sounds like it would only be 20 minutes. So she would still get three hours and say 40 minutes, but if that TV time is a reward for whatever work and effort she put in throughout the day, it feels like she's probably not rewarding herself in the way that she wants to. And so it's, it's like, again, it's flipping the script. It's having the conversation around like, this is, this is self-care. This yeah. is, this is, this is rewarding yourself for, yeah. and it's creating a life that allows you to feel calm and, and have the space to, to think through things. Um, yeah. and okay. Was, oh, sorry. No, no, was, go ahead. If you would have said that TV was the most important, I said, okay, what else can we kind of work around? But it wasn't her organizing was more important. So I'm like, great. So now we can make some choices on that. So it's, it's just getting clear and some, some things got to give if you're going to want to change. And so it's once you get it though, and she's been already loving it, it's been a week and she's like, I should have done this forever ago. I'm like, it's okay. You know, you start with today and it's all good. <laughs> so, right. She's got to, especially if you have kids, you just got to do your Kenny bears after they go to bed. Kenny bears. I, <laughs> I this is my new favorite thing. <laughs> I'm going to send you the Richard's yeah. book. <laughs> um, uh, 
the second thing that you said is that people don't know where to start. And I think that that's really overwhelming for people, especially if they're in a house full of clutter and stuff. Um, where can we start and where are the places where you, where are the places in a home that get like, like real placky? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my best advice would always be to start small and, you know, don't start with your garage. Don't start with your office and papers or memories. It's really physically starting small. So your joy drawer, which people call the junk drawer in your kitchen, if you have one, it's to, you know, pulling out your medicine and just checking if they're expired, going through your spices, going through, like taking a drawer versus the whole space. And when you feel that 20 minute win, that is going to help you in your next, your next obstacle, right? And so as you keep building that momentum, but the starting small is my best advice because I've had people start in other areas and there it derails their whole their whole plan and then taking inventory. So going through the pain points in your house of what is the thing that you don't want to come home to? What is the thing that's making you so anxious or overwhelmed? It could be your whole house or it could be just one room. And so understanding if it is one room, maybe we should start in a drawer in that one room, right? So it's creating your own inventory checklist of what your pain points in your home are. Again, not starting with the garage or the memories and all that, unless you have one box only, but having that conversation, scheduling and, and just starting small, but really just starting. Like the moment you just start and put that in your calendar and dedicate 20 minutes, that's all I'm asking. You can do anything for 20 minutes and, and seeing how not only you feel, how you feel internally, but seeing this transformation and then you'll get excited you're ready, ready for the next. So it's, it's just starting small, but just really starting making that plan. You know, it's funny because, um, we call it the purge, <laughs> Chris and I, when we're like, oh, we're like drowning in clutter. And especially because publicists have my physical address, sometimes my email address. And when you rent, mm -hmm. we just bought, but like having rental, rentals and moving through COVID and stuff. It's interesting because I have old landlords be like, I got a box from, I don't know, you know, it's some nail company, nail polish company, or it's like healthy protein bars, you know, and you're just like, yeah. I, you don't want to be, um, I, you, I don't want to be wasteful. I want, you know, it's very often that I'll get a box of like food or something. Like I just got, I think like it was like 32 boxes of mac and cheese in a small um i mean the waste is unbelievable in the in the pr world but like a, mm -hmm. inside of a mini locker that was like purple and i'm like okay texting the girlfriends i have who have little girls i'm like i have this purple locker you don't need to take my junk but if this is something that would bring your children joy like let me know and then i took the box of mac and cheese and i put it out on our driveway because i have a bunch of kids on our street and i was like we aren't even going to go through 32 boxes of mac and cheese yeah in the next two years. So yeah. if anyone on the street like wants this, it's on the patio, you know, or it's on the driveway, please like, you know, ride your bike up, send, send a wagon, grab as many as you'd eat. But just, there are times when either boxes roll in and then I'm surrounded by things either I, I'm not going to eat or use, or, um, you know, the need it one really stands out for me because it's like, I might get a sleep supplement that I love, like a magnesium from Mind Body Green, or I may get, you know, um, seed probiotics may send like some like celebratory, like extra bottle outside of my subscription. And I'm like, Ooh, I might need this. <laughs> I'm going to keep this. Let's find space for it. Like, yeah. so yeah. can we, can we talk through need it a little bit? Like how do people, how, I mean, there might be that chance, Jen, that we need that thing. <laughs> oh, I a timeline I hear you. or I hear you. I, and and again, it's different for everyone. And I try to say in different places of the home. So you know, in a closet, I'm I'm constantly editing my closet, but you know, by season or for sure, no longer than a year, because that means if you 
maybe not live in California when there's very little seasons, but if it's like you have not worn one of these things and just taking the inventory. But I, I talk about this in the book where I was laughing at my own rule because we had moved last year into a new home and I was going through, I was so excited. I like edited every room, got it all prepped, kicked everybody out. I'm like, I am going to do this move by myself. Like, this is my happy place. Just let me be. And I, we hadn't been using this pasta maker ever. And we, you know, very used, you know, if we would need it one day, worst case, I could buy it again. But I laugh because the very next week when we moved, it was one of my bonus daughter had her girlfriends over and wanted to make pasta, but we just got rid of the pasta maker. And I'm like, Ooh, I have this moment of, oh, it failed me, my own rule. But you know what? I had, we had the best night. Like they laughed at me, of course, like, of course you would get rid of it, but we used, oh, a rolling pin and it took longer, but it was so fun. And it had all these new memories that we wouldn't have had. And again, if we ended up being pasta makers weekly, I probably would have gotten a new one. But at the time of my life, it we never used it. Mm-hmm. Never. And so it is really, I can't ever say you are never going to need this one day because the reality of like, we don't live in the future and we just don't know. But it's, going back to like, do you need it? Love it, use it. And I mean, there's so many more questions with that. It's like, are there duplicates? You know, would you miss it if it was gone? But the reality of everything can be replaced. And, and that's where it comes in. And again, not asking you to buy something new, but it, it does go back to creating the life and what you want to live for today and having those, those conversations. And again, it might not be perfect and you might need a pasta maker, but it, it's just one of those things of it's okay to let it go and it's okay to create space and what that looks like. But the reality is no one knows what the future holds. And I don't know if I'm never going to eat carbs again and need that pasta or if I'm going to turn into a chef and want to make pasta every night. But it's living for today, creating the home life for today, and just being clear with what that looks like for each person. Really important. Really important. We, I, I think the one year rule is um, one that I'll start implementing because there are times where I look at my closet and I'm like, or maybe my kitchen appliances, and I, and I'm like, yeah, I may, I may need that. My, the aspirational me wants to wear that more often. <laughs> That's I think why I'm down to three heels because I'm <laughs> like, I would love a closet full of Manolos, but um, it's just not my reality right now with toddlers to be and doing podcasts and seeing clients via Zoom right now, it just, it's not in my reality that I would be sitting here at this desk wearing heels. Exactly. And life happens. And I think the ebb and flow of what that looks like. And um, one of the biggest things too, is just also when you create space in your home and what that looks like, if it's something that you use every Thanksgiving, no, you're not going to get rid of that because you do use it every Thanksgiving, but it's also creating the space of where that belongs in your home. So not in prime real estate, not in like everyday functioning kitchen space, pantry space. Maybe that is in your back stock, or maybe that is in your seasonal area where it is less used, but taking up less space day to day. That also is a big important thing. It's not, you're not letting go of it, but you're also just creating a new location for it, that it's not taking up the daily, you know, visual of you seeing it and thinking about it too. That's great. I mean, let's talk, can we talk that through? Because you mentioned um, the joy drawer or the (laughs) junk drawer and prime real estate. What are we, like the junk drawer that's happening in prime real estate. Most of the time it's someone's kitchen drawer or like, you know, in a, an easy to access drawer in like a communal area. What, uh, how are we keeping those areas organized? What are we keeping in prime real estate? And how do we decide when to store something or put it in back stock? So prime real estate is really just 
we'll take a pantry, for example. If you're a baker and you bake every day, that should probably be front and center or in arm's distance, not at the top of your pantry. And if you're not a baker, that prime real estate should be used for something else. So it's like your day-to-day -day meals, meal prep, planning, whatever that looks like. And then baking, you know, you might need to get on a stool if you're using it once a month, or you might need to just put it in a spot where it's not, again, front and center and central. Um, and then with like the daily essentials, and I love the joy drawer because I'm like, let's not do junk anymore. You know, I want everything to add value. And and that essential drawer is something that's important, but a lot of times becomes a catch-all um, of random miscellaneous things because mm -hmm. it's an easy access point because it's all miscellaneous things. So it's like, just put it in the, the joy drawer. Um, but also taking time to go through that. And do you use a notebook? And are you someone that doesn't write groceries on a notebook anymore? you know, do you need scissors by the, you know, again, what's the flow of your space? Where would that live? Do you even need one? Is it really just, you can put some your keys somewhere else, like a command center. Um, but that is, again, walking through your space, physically walking through your space and just looking and seeing and feeling if that flow, you know, are the zones where they should be? Are Is the flow working for you? Is it saving you time every day? I'm not going to tell someone to create a joy drawer if they don't need one. It's not like an absolute need, but if it's something that you, you know, you write checks or I laugh when I, I find menus, everything's online right now. So I'm like, you do not need a physical copy of a menu, no judgment, but let's, you know, prioritize letting that go <laughs> and recycling it. Um, so having, again, feeling and looking towards what your space is and what you want it to be, but physically walking through it. Like I grab a notebook or grab your notes on your phone and walk through and, and, and understanding like, okay, we never use this. Why is this right next to the fridge? We use that every day and, and creating, save yourself time and your sanity and money. Because if you're putting something away that you are using, you're going to forget about it and keep buying it. So having that clear, um, clear understanding of what, what matters to you. Definitely. Can you talk me through, uh, a command center and um, creating spaces for things. Like I think about the things that end up on a counter that make Chris, he called, I do have piles places. <laughs> so I feel like this is therapy. I have piles and piles <laughs> of clean okay. laundry. I have piles of like the important mail that comes in for me and my purse. <laughs> and, um, you know, if I wore a, a Janessa Leone hat the whole day because I didn't wash my hair or, you know, it kind of turns into a pile. How do you account? Like I'm thinking about moving, you know, our new house and having like a mudroom if I'm coming through the garage and then we'll have the kitchen and, you know, bedroom and all of that. Like in an ideal world, like I'm immediately walking in, putting my hat going upstairs, putting my hat away, putting my purse like in my closet, taking my phone downstairs, plugging it in. Like Chris mm -hmm. has like a system for this. But for me, it's like I'm moving a million miles a minute with a number of things I have to do. So how are you accounting for efficiencies in someone's life when they also want to be organized? So we call this these piles the clutter shuffle. <laughs> oh, like okay. any hard surface, because then it's like if you have guests over, you're just moving that pile to another spot and then another Definitely. spot. And it's just like a funny little shuffle that people do. Um, so this central location, this command center, is kind of your high traffic area in your home. So for you, I actually loved hearing, you know, the walk you through the day. You take off your hat and your keys. So my then going through that flow, would it be more efficient to keep your purse downstairs and not put it in your closet? Is that your daily purse? And then you can put that in your central location and then have your phone charging station nearby. Again, the efficiency is what's going to work for you and your flow and physically walking through that space. And by it could change, it, it might change, but then you'll have these understanding of what the system should be and you'll work around that. So it's the efficiency. It's really going through your day-to-day -day and what makes the most sense for you and where things should go. Obviously like mud rooms and if the kids have sports stuff, you know, you're not bringing that into the house. If it's dirty, you want to try to keep the cleats outside. So it's just, it's a little bit of understanding the flow of 
even the seasons and different times of your life and even physically, like if you need a rain jacket versus not a rain jacket and having a space downstairs. And then maybe when it's summer, you're putting your rain jacket back upstairs in your closet because you are ever evolving and, and ever um, moving towards what's working right now. And so this, this command center is a nice kind of hub. It's where if you love to meal plan, prep and plan and having the calendar of everyone's schedules, it might be that there's, you know, electronic cords to plug into. It could be where your purse is and just having it in one space. So it's easy for you to walk in and out the door of the items that you need day to day. Mm -hmm. You're making me think creatively about this mudroom now. Like, where am I going to have my plugs for all my, all, all of our phones and electronics, like my aura ring or things like that? Like, I love that. I, I love that idea just of having the space for it. And, and also, I mean, I'm sure people listening, I mean, I have a, a light California, not a lot of change, but I do have like a pretty big pea coat in our downstairs closet right now that I definitely will not wear anytime soon. You wear it for like six weeks in California. <laughs> So it, it should be upstairs waiting until I go to New York next. Mm -hmm. And I think being flexible, I, again, it's no, pro, it's no perfect science, but there's never any judgment, never judge your, you know, self, give yourself grace, but it's the flexibility of your life will look different. Maybe each day, maybe each week, maybe once, a, you know, all of that. And so kind of being flexible with, within your space and also who's in the space, and if there isn't enough space, if someone doesn't have a garage and they have all this, you know, what is the next best option? And what, a, what does that look like for the next person? Mm. Such good stuff. I'm, I'm making, you're making me so excited for our move. I want to do it by Yay. myself. But Chris is going to want to do it by himself first. I know. I was like, I'd love to help. I feel like Chris wants to do it by himself. But if you need help. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you're offering, we're, we'll Anytime. take you up <laughs> on that. I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so impressed always with the products that you share on Instagram. You shared one that was, that held like a big Yeti. And all I take with me is a big Yeti. And then I'm driving around and I hear the stainless steel like rolling into the metal tracks yep. of the front seat <laughs> and then I'm that person at the stoplight like fully pretzeled around trying to grab for it <laughs> in traffic not safe um yep. but <laughs> well I am I'm so excited about your new book Jen and um all the tips and tricks that you share but that that little Amazon cup holder in a cup holder that holds my Yeti. You, uh, you influenced me. Yay. I love so, it. Because, yeah, it's, it's those beautiful containers that make things yeah. feel like, oh, I feel, feel calm and yeah. about this. Yeah. And we get, look, it's, it's so, it's fascinating because there's something for everything, right? But I want to make it clear. And I, I do talk about this in the book because often you do need that containment or you do need X, but it, it really doesn't mean you need to spend all this money or you need to have it quote unquote perfect. Because again, I don't believe in that, but it goes back to what's going to work for you within either your budget or your lifestyle of what you want it to look like. And, and that function and aesthetics is really important because I think when you love your surroundings, and I believe that it's, you're going to be more inclined to put things back because you're going to know how it feels when it's not back in order. And so the aesthetics of it, it is a part with our brain. That's why design is such a important, you know, design organization, aesthetics function, but function has to win. Of course, you just want to love where you, your surroundings and creating that, that space that makes you feel that way. Oh, well, thank you for writing all of your expertise down in your book. Um, the book is Life in General, A Joyful Guide to Organizing Your Home and Creating the Space for What Matters Most, for giving us these tools and tricks. Um, I love the five-step method. Uh, Chris loves the system. We joke that he has systems for everything. So mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce him to the five-step method and your systems, and we'll probably give you a call to come check when out our space. That. Absolutely. <laughs> well, where can people follow along? Where can they learn more? And um, where can they focus on what matters most? Mm -hmm. So 
our Instagram handle is our, you know, we that's the day to day at life in general, general with a J. And then our website is lifeingeneral.com. And I I really believe, and I'm I'm so excited that this book is out in the world because I I've seen it already change lives and I know that and I stand by it because it's it's so important when you get clear in your own life and your own space of what really matters. And I hope that, you know, more people can read it and understand the process of getting, you know, there's hope for us all. We can all get to a certain point and just loving the journey. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here and I will link everything in the show notes, but I'm just I'm, you're making me really excited about the movie. Yay! So, I love it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Be Well by Kelly. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Learn more at bewellbykelly.com and follow me on Instagram at bewellbykelly. I would love if you picked up my books, Body Love and Body Love Every Day. They're sold on Amazon and at all major booksellers. 